want to say thank you, Jesus. I want to say praise the Lord. I want to say hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank the interim pastor, Dr. Robinson, for that warm presentation and for the invitation to come and to serve. Uh, he's doing just what he's supposed to be doing. He's preparing us for our new leader. Amen. That's the job of the interim pastor. Amen. 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 I want to thank you, Dr. Robinson, for your ministry. And I want to acknowledge our assistant pastor, who's been very gracious.
pastor, uh, retired pastor, is different from secular employment. In secular employment, when you retire, you're supposed to sever all relationships and be gone. But if a pastor who has served for years, it's a part of the family. Amen. 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 And love does not cut off. It does not, as long as that retired pastor knows not to meddle, mm -hmm. then everything's all right. Amen. 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 So uh, we're, we're coming along fine. The Lord has blessed you, is blessing me, blessing us. And we're giving him the praise That's right. that Amen. his will be done Amen. in the life of this congregation. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, may let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength. I'm very grateful for the scripture that was read. And of course, as we look at Psalm 27, which is very famous, mm -hmm. verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Yes. Psalm 103, verse 13, like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. And in the more modern translations, as a father has compassion on his children, mm -hmm. so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Our Father, which art inactive. Now this is not a sermon on beating up on men. Mm. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to beat up on myself. Amen. Mm. No. But today we honor those dads and substitute fathers and surrogate fathers who we love, who have tried, who are encouraging, who give praise, who teach, who embrace, who are there for their children, offspring, and for those fathers who have stepped up to the plate. Amen. Amen. I want to say that it's a sad day for many of us. But some of us don't have pleasant memories mm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. Some of the mothers don't have pleasant memories. Some of the fathers themselves don't have pleasant memories. And some of the children don't have pleasant memories. Some fathers are lost. Amen. Mm. They, they, they are just lost. And some fathers we have lost due to death. There is or was uh, no relationship with those who are lost. They're weak on that. They're, there was no sense of presence, no communication, limited, no contact, no interaction, no reaching out. The reasons vary. They vary, and we have to be careful about the blame game. Mm -hmm. However, some mothers have been very effective in keeping children away from their father. That's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Amen. And most mothers will appreciate a strong hand from the father in rearing the children. Mm -hmm. It's a tough job being a child. Mm -hmm. And especially mothers who are rearing sons. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. Yes. Yes. And when that boy gets so he don't want to hear nothing the mother got to say, she got a job on her hand. Amen. And in most cases, and especially if the father remarries, and he gets a little fresh mother, Mother said, go on with your father. Mm. And I always prepare the second wife. Brace yourself. Because mm. your family may increase a little more than what you expect. They come to me after the year. Pastor, it happened just like you said. I told you to brace yourself. <laughs> Amen. Now, Pastor, we're going to just move right along. But fatherhood is an adult privilege. Every man is not 
privilege to have that privilege. It's a privilege that needs to be taken seriously. Amen. Amen. That's right. And it's more than sperm donation. Well. It's more than that. It's more than activity being a lover of the child's mother and no relationship with the child. It's a little more than that. It's much more than that. And it's not limited to biological relationships. Adopted fathers are to be commended. Amen. Foster fathers are to be commended. Yes. Amen. Blended fathers are to be commended. Yes. Stepfathers who up, walk up to the plate are to be commended. Yes. Good uncles are to be commended. Yes. Grandfathers who rear their children who now rearing their grandchildren are to be commended. Yes. And we spoke to you today for a job well done. I want to say that life is short. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. And uh, you can mess up, but you can straighten up. That's right. And you don't have to stay messed up. That's right. You make some mistakes, but there's one who looks beyond your faults yeah. and sees you need if you've got a mind to do right. Our hearts go out to the fathers who have lost their children mm -hmm. in any way. And so we mourn with them. The inactive fathers have caused their children grief. And they have deprived society of necessary leadership. They have caused much pain and anguish, anxiety, bitterness, distrust, fear, feelings of rejection. The inactive fathers have turned their backs not only on, on their children, but on God's children. Well. The children didn't ask to come into this world. Well. Amen. Amen. Bringing harm to a child through neglect, non-acceptance, rejection, is bringing harm to Christ. Because if you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. There is a tendency to become inactive. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and men, we, we are guilty. Uh, woman tells you she's pregnant, how do I know it's mine? Yeah. Weren't you there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sometimes mothers are preoccupied in pushing the father away. Sometimes fathers run from responsibility, make such lame excuses. I ain't working. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm mad, I can't mess up my home. Pastor Joe, would you please move along? <laughs> So sometimes the fathers lack maturity. They're physically grown, but they're emotionally immature. Sometimes the women got more than one child, the child to rear that they brought into the world, and the one who say, well, you know I love you, baby. <laughs> My baby daddy. <laughs> oh, go jump in the baby. <laughs> and you know, uh, Pastor Gino Jennings, uh, I disagree with most of what he said. But I turned on TV just to hear what he got to say. But when he started beating up on these deadbeat daddies, I said, hey, Amen. <laughs> because he's right on it. Sometimes fathers they deny, reject, ignore, shut down, run away. Fight the mothers at the expense of the child. Now, in the last century, the families have been reorganized, reconstructed, and 
reconstituted in slavery we jumped over the road and had committed relationships and the community knew it even if the slave master didn't recognize it we recognized it with each other and now 70% of our youngsters are born to single parents. And it's no need of throwing rocks at the mothers because this is not Mother's Day. But a mother can't have a child by herself. And so if there's 70% single parents and single births, there's 70% fathers somewhere. There ought to be a bright side somewhere. Amen. So the system sometimes was against us. It used to be saying, well, if you want to, if your old man is not working, he can't be in the home, so he's got to go. The home is broken up. If the home is going to get part of the system, then the old man's got to go. The system now has an incarceration system. Most of the men in jail are us. And we are there not always for legitimate reasons. And former Mayor Good, when he comes to speak to us or anyone, he always gives the illustration that there was a grandfather, a father, and a grandson meeting each other for the first time in jail. And brothers and sisters, we have to break that cycle. Yes. We are the church of Jesus Christ, and it's our job to break it. Yes. Street and domestic violence. And so we are inactive for many reasons. Through violence, through drugs, through alcoholism, through drug abuse, through incarceration. Our Father, which are inactive. And where are you? And who are you? And what does it take to turn matters around? To reverse the trend? Absenteeism among our men of color. What does it take? And there are times where there's a breakdown in the relationship between the mother of the child and the father of the child. And sometimes we're not putting a value judgment on that, and we're not judging that, but you don't have to make the child pay for it. Mm -hmm. Father's absence is, or inaccessibility, is a major factor in our family crisis today. And some of our mothers have done a yoga's job. Mm -hmm. I see them early morning, 7 o'clock, 7 to 6 30. With the child in one arm, taking the child to daycare, getting ready to go to work, coming back, picking up the child, I don't see the man. And whenever I see a man doing that, I say, praise God. Yes. There's a good one. Yes. Our Father, which are inactive. And so, let's see, let's look at some biblical examples of inactive fathers. And, 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 and to keep this from being a negative sermon, I have to turn around and be positive. Mm. So, if you're inactive, the opposite of inactivity is being active. Amen. So, actively insecure. <laughs> ah. Who in the Bible is actively insecure? Well, let's look at old man Isaac. Well. He was a pathetic soul. Mm. Son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. And uh, married a woman who had him right around her finger. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And had two boys. And of course, he lost his sight. And of course, some people who are blind have keener uh, insights. Like, and the sensitivities in other areas are far keener. And so one boy was supposed to get the birthright. But the younger boy wanted to steal the birthright. And the younger boy was 
was the favorite of his mother, Jacob the little rascal. And so Jacob and his mother manipulated the old man. Yeah. Esau was rough and hairy. Here comes Jacob putting on the skins of the animals. And the father's initial instinct was it doesn't walk like Jacob. Mm. Doesn't feel like it. It doesn't walk like Esau. It doesn't smell like Esau. His initial instinct, and he should have followed his initial instinct. Mm -hmm. He should not have allowed son or wife or anybody to manipulate him if he was unsure. That's right. He was a very insecure man. And so some of our men are definitely insecure. And you don't have to remain insecure. We can turn that thing around. Yeah. Our father, which I didn't have to. Uh, and not actively insecure, and then there's an actively insensitive. Now, some men are just so insensitive. I mean, you know, I always give this illustration about a man calling on a lady, and she had this beautiful meal for him, and uh, candlelight, nice table setting, slaved all day, fixing this meal for that hardhead. He just eating like a pig. All she wants is one compliment. Just all she needs is one compliment. Finally, she said, Do you like the meal? See me eating it, don't you? <laughs> just insensitive. And so, who in the Bible is an insensitive father? Let's look at King David. Mm -hmm. And we just love King David because he wrote the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he came from rags to riches. Mm -hmm. He came from the field to the path. Mm -hmm. uh, he conquered his 10,000. Amen. Mm -hmm. Saul, his predecessor, conquered his thousands. But he was a great warrior. And a great woman, I said, too. Mm -hmm. But when it came to being the father, he was as insensitive as he could be. One of his sons raped his head, raped his daughter by another wife. Mm -hmm. And David, with all this conquering ability of nations, did not address did not put his arms around his daughter, did not support her, did not affirm her, neither did he reprimand Ammon or oh, his son for that behavior which was most inappropriate. Mm -hmm. He was insensitive. He was, when it came to being a father, great win of a great uh, Man of war, great warrior, great king, great in the eyes of the public, but at home, insensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about unsure and insecure and being insensitive. Mm -hmm. Then there's another man, father, Noah. <laughs> well. Oh, he knew the Lord. Yeah. Yes. And the Lord knew him. Mm -hmm. Oh, he built a great ark. Mm -hmm. And he had the security to make people make in front of him, but he kept, kept on building up. Kept on following the Lord's command. Invited his family in and invited an animal, male and female each animal into the ark because the flood was coming. And then the flood came. His family was saved. The animals were saved. When the ark was settled, he gonna get stoned. Mm. <laughs> gonna get bummed out. Mm. 
going to drink himself. Indiscreetly, I'm talking about indiscretion. Some fathers who are actively indiscreet, you don't show everything to your children. They're not to see you do everything. How can you demand respect showing everything to them? There he is, stumbling on the floor, nude, and his children looking at him in a, in a disgraceful, drunken stupor. He's indiscreet. Some of us are indiscreet with our addictions. Mm. We're indiscreet with our gambling. Mm. Indiscreet with our drugs. Mm. Indiscreet with our arguments with our spouses. They're not going to hear you arguing with your spouse. That's between you and your spouse.
Amen. Amen. So some of us talk about, well, I didn't have fun. I don't know how to be. Nobody else knows how to be. Yeah. If they haven't been before. That's right. But you have to trust God. That's right. And he, he'll give you the strength. He'll give you the wherewithal. Yeah. He'll give you the wisdom. Yeah. He'll give you what you need to do what you have to do. That's right. Amen. So I want to say, actively engage. Actively involved. We have a body in the New Testament. Jairus was a father. His daughter, laying sick, almost dying. And so he finds Jesus. Yeah. Been to the doctor. Been there to work. Been to the church. Not just working. He knew to go to Jesus. Yeah. And all the fathers who know to go to Jesus. Praying fathers are strong men. There's another one in the New Testament who is the prodigal son. The prodigal father. Father of the prodigal son. Engaged and involved. First of all, he listened. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the key. Not only did he listen, he met his sons on the level where they were. And so one son, hey man, ain't but two of us, half in mine, half in my brother, give me mine now. Hmm. And you know the father heard him, gave him the stuff, knew he was going to mess up, <laughs> went out, came on down to Skid Row. Well. <laughs> Said, Lord, have mercy, I'm eating from the pig's trough. Well. Let me go on home as a servant. Let me humble myself. And when he started coming, the father saw him afar off. Didn't come down on him. Didn't judge him. Just welcomed him home. Because he was engaged. And he was involved. But then there's another son with issues. Mm. With attitude. Well. Hey man, hey, what you doing? Killing the fat cat. I've been here all these years, you ain't never given me no party. Uh, who's this dude coming in here after wasting half of your estate? He said, now wait a minute, son. This is your brother. Yes. Who was dead. Mm. And is now alive. And all that I have belongs to you. He ministered to both Amen. Amen. Because he listened. He was involved. He was engaged. And so many parents are not involved and not engaged. They don't listen. They don't hear. They turn a deaf ear. Children don't talk to them. Or they talk and they're not heard. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. One man yesterday was honored in Greaterford. A life. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. The life of us, they have a community right there in the prison. And uh, they themselves honor each other. And there was one father who was a lifer, but his wife brought those children, three children, to him either every week or once a month. And he would lecture them. He would speak to them. He would engage them. He would teach them. Mm. And every child finished college. Some had rapid work. Mm. They are committed. They are contributing to society because their father worked with their mother in teaching them, even though he was in prison. And the prisoner honored this man. Amen. Amen. And so I want to say. Uh, Reverend Johnny, I don't want to put you on the spot, but when I visited you and your daughter in the hospital in the late hours, there you were, mm. sitting all night with your baby girl. Mm. That touched my heart. Mm -hmm. That was a father. Yeah, man. Amen. Who was involved and who's engaged. And I just want to say that it, it doesn't. It costs a whole lot. That's right. Mm. It costs some of you.
cost you time. Yeah. It costs you involvement. And other men uh, whose lot is not to be natural fathers or biological fathers, but you can step up to the plate. There's boys Scout. Yeah. There's girls Scout. There's, there's boys club. There's girls club. There's the youth ministries of the church. There's tutoring that can be done. There's hall mentoring in the halls of the school. There's town watch that can be done. There's little league that can be done. There's much to be done. Yes. So when I think about Minister Brian Wallace, Amen. Amen. He's our scout master. Yeah. Right. Amen. And in on, he's been with us 10 years. Mm -hmm. And in those 10 years, we were in two inaugural parades. Mm -hmm. Within those 10 years, we've had more than 10 Eagle Scouts. Mm -hmm. And then he announced to me this week, I was visiting his father. He said, Pastor I'm going to have to give up being scout master. I said, no, no, you can't do that. He said, oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I said, why, why are you going to do that? He says, I, I've been in school. I'm principal of a school. I'm finishing up my studies. And I've got to spend more time with my daughter. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I said, go, go with my blessings. And so we have passion. We have persuasion, we have provision. And it takes more than a new pair of sneaks, a new pair of jeans. It takes more than an iPod, more than a mechanical device, more than a new computer, more than a Facebook, more than a new telephone number, more than a new uh, wireless telephone. It takes a relationship of care, of concern, of compassion, of love. And some fathers have pulled this off. And we thank God for you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yeah. What we need is more active fathers for good. Yeah. More active fathers for Christ. Yeah. More active fathers that are committed to the job that's been assigned to them. Fathers who are currently uninvolved, you don't have to stay uninvolved. And you can't make up for lost time. If you miss five years, 10 years, 20 years, that's gone. That's right. Try to pick up the pieces and go forward. Yes. Fathers who are distant can become closer. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. That's right. Fathers who are divorced, from the children's mother, you don't have to be divorced from the children. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Fathers who are custodial parent can become more active in the lives of their children. Amen. And fathers who are custodial parents don't have to be putting down the children's mother mm -hmm. just because you are the custodial parent. And mothers, you don't have to put down the father or put him under the bus just because you are the custodial parent. Children would grow up and find out for themselves. Yeah. Fathers who did it wrong in the past, you owe your children an apology. Mm -hmm. Owe them a confession. Mm -hmm. Owe them honesty. Owe them the fact that you are sorry for having hurt them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That would mean much to them that you do care and that you have a sensitivity. Fathers who do not pray need to learn how to pray. That's right. Amen. Amen. The prayer is not just for women. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught us how to pray. Yes, right. he did. He taught the disciples how to pray. Mm -hmm. And whatever Jesus does, it's all right. Yeah. Right. You ought to ask the Savior to help you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And ask him to strengthen you, to be the man that he has called you to be. And some of us are, are not working and we are unemployed and our self-esteem has gone down. But I tell you what, the children still need you. Yeah. They need what you have to offer. Because money is not everything. That's right. Some people don't know what I'm talking about. 
They don't know what I'm preaching about. They don't know what it is to have an active, active father or who's involved and engaged. But you ought to know God. Mm -hmm. You ought to know Him. That's right. And if you can't know your earthly father, there's a heavenly father that you can know. Yeah. There's one that's available. There's one who can feel your pain. Mm -hmm. And one who knows just how much you're able to bear. Mm -hmm. I, we have fathers right here in this church who are excellent fathers. Yes. Who didn't have fathers in their lives when they were growing up. Yes. But God has given them the strength right. and given them the power and they know what they would have liked if they had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so whatever your case, whatever your experience, whatever your station, there's one Father who loves us all, mm -hmm. who created us all. Yes. There's one patriarch, there's one God, there's one Father whose love is endless. There's one father who won't get old and won't get decrepit. There's one father whose physical physique will not deteriorate. There's one father who's based on the spirit, the spirit of the Holy Ghost, yes. which was there in the beginning, is there now, and he shall be forevermore. Our father, which are enacted, oh, let's confess that. But there is a father in heaven. And we have his name. Yes, He's always active. Mm -hmm. He's always present. He's always pursuing us. He's always persistent. He's always protecting. He's always forgiving. He's always loving. He's always calling us. He's always enabling us. He's always empowering us. He's always helping us out. He's always picking us up out of the muck and mire. Well, He's always revealing himself to us. He's always comforting. He's always cheering. Mm -hmm. I sang last week in prayer meeting in my slow, draggy way, take the name of Jesus with you. Yes. Child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go. And so the Son of God Jesus, the Son of God, conceived before his earthly father married his earthly mother, saved the world, and he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, mm -hmm. which art in heaven. He taught us how to call upon him. He taught us how to pray before breaking the bread. Mm -hmm. He taught us how to pray when challenged, when up wits in corner. He taught us how to pray when the hour was darkest. And he taught us how to pray even in the Garden of Gethsemane. He bore the cross alone. Mm -hmm. Jesus did that. Yeah. He carried the emblem of shame. He saved the world. He saved sinners, as Paul said, of whom I am chief. And he shared, he gave up the ghost and prayed to the Father, Father, into thy hand. I commend my spirit. Mm -hmm. And so, the risen Christ lets us know that we are to baptize all nations in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In our own tradition, harder yet may be the fight, right may often yield to might, wickedness a while may reign, Satan's cause may seem to gain. There is a God. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a God. Yes, yes. I said there is a God. Yes. There is a God. There is a God that rules a God with a hand of power and heart of love. Yes. And if we are right, mm -hmm. he'll fight our battle. Yes. We shall have peace someday. someday. Yes. There's a God who created us in his own image. And if we believe on him and trust in him, we become heirs to the kingdom. In our own tradition, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us in the path we pray. 
Amen. I trust in God. Yes. That's who I'm trusting yeah. in. Mm -hmm. That's who I know wakes me up every morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's who I know puts me to bed every night. Mm -hmm. That's who I know watches over me. Mm -hmm. That's who I know makes a way out of nowhere. I trust in God. Where I may be, upon the land or on the rolling sea, for come what may, mm. thank you, Jesus, for come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father. Watch it. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. My heavenly Father. My heavenly Father. Watch it. Over me. Amen. Amen. We are our heavenly fathers too. That's who we are. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't nothing. You are somebody. You are a child of God. You are made in the image of God. He empowers us. He sustains us. He strengthens us. He enables us. And we know he knows just how much we can bear. Yes. <clears throat> Stop complaining. Stop talking about how tough it is. Stop talking about how hard it is. Harder yet may be the fight. Right may often yield to right. But if you're right, you'll fight our battle. You keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. There will be a light at the other end of the tunnel. Don't you give up on God. Trust in Him anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being the Father that you are. And Father, who been inactive, you can become more active. And Father, who been active, we praise God for you. We thank God for you. We stroke you. We honor you. Praise God from Zion. All is not lost. We have his word. When our father and our mother forsake me, then the Lord, then the Lord will take me up. Isn't that wonderful to know him? Isn't it wonderful that he knows you? Isn't it wonderful we got somebody to go to? Yeah. We can call him and there's no call waiting. Yeah. We call our doctor and he gives us an appointment two months down the road. Yeah. Amen. There's no waiting when it comes to God. He's a right now God. Yeah. He's a sensitive God. He's a secure God. He's a creator of God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. And he loves us one and all. Whatever our mistakes, take it to him. Whatever our failures, take it to him. Whatever our hang-ups, take it to him. He'll make a way. He'll help you out. He'll pull you over the hump. He'll put your head on right. He'll wash your hands and he'll purify your heart. He'll establish your Lord. I thank God that he's brought me safe thus far. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, yeah. where would I be? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. Yes. We all have made mistakes, and we all have fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I stand. My hand yes. to thee. Yes. No other help. Yes. I know yes. if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank God.
Amen. Amen.